session. We want to move through some stuff quickly here. So um, quickly, that's hard for me. There's going to be a non fiscal bill of some sort. There's about seven of them right now. We'll see what wins out on this crypto mining, um, some changes to that. What's going to be your role in that? Just advising or do you think that you might be filing some lawsuits at some point? Uh, in time? My role is always to help any way I can, uh, help the legislature with the text of bills, uh, because ultimately if we end up in court, then it's going to be in my lap, right? And so it's in my interest, it's in the state's interest, and in Arkansans' interest for uh, me to work with legislators. Uh, sometimes they come to me, they often do, or, or to my staff, uh, and sometimes uh, I will take a particular interest in a bill and I may call someone up and say, hey, I'd really like to help you with that uh, because you know, we've got some preferences or whatever. Uh, in this particular case, mostly that has been through my uh, deputy, Alexandra Benton, who's fabulous. She's been attending a lot of the discussions and, and uh, we've been helping as people have asked. But I've also made it clear that my primary focus, uh, personally, that I believe is where my focus should be, is on China and uh, foreign so actors, foreign, foreign foreign actors yeah. that are not our friends, right? Gotcha. So not, not Britain, uh, not Canada, but foreign actors that, that I personally don't think we ought to trust. And so I am weighing in on that I, uh, through her, and I, I made some calls, I made a call yesterday, and so I'm starting to weigh in. Okay. Um, but I do, that's my focus, uh, and I think it could operate very similar to way the uh, divestment of agricultural right. land law does where you say uh, zero, w we will allow zero Chinese ownership of a crypto mining operation, zero percent. Once we identify it, we give them a year or whatever, whatever the legislature decides, but we give them a runway to divest and then we give me the ability to impose penalties for uh, non-compliance in certain areas. I think that sort of model it works. It's worked in other instances. I think it would work here. We'll see what they come up with, but I'm, I am very um, engaged on that. Okay. Um, next, yeah. next topic. You have issued a, an opinion to the governor who mm -hmm. asked you to weigh in on her purchasing practices mm -hmm. and what her authority mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. I don't think it takes a rocket scientist to figure mm -hmm. out this is related to the, mm -hmm. the lectern purchase. Yep. Uh, tell me what you opined yeah. uh, in, the, in, your, um, in your opinion that came so, out. So, uh, first of all, this is like every, this went through the same exact process that every other opinion goes through. It, it, we don't wade into uh, the facts of situations, as you probably know. These are legal opinions that focus on legal issues, and the issue here was whether the accounting and budget law uh, basically does it apply as a general matter to constitutional offices. Uh, Generally because speaking, it doesn't. It does not. Yeah. And it deals with agencies, and uh, so that's what the question was about. We opined on that, and uh, but just, just for those who don't know, for example, in this case, like the other opinions that we've issued, and we talk about this on the on the ballot measure opinions. I never saw this opinion until it got to me last for it's approval. It's been researched, it's been vetted, it's been... Uh, right. Noah Watson, I think personally, I've got it right here. Yeah, that's I think was. he okay. personally drafted this, which is quite long in detail. Yeah, he's outstanding. Um, but uh, he's my new deputy in charge of opinions. He wrote it, he went through the process, working with his incredible professionals and, and then it was sent to me. But it's a really narrow issue. Does that law apply to, to constitutional offices? It doesn't. Critics are going to say that you are offering this as cover for the governor. She's going to, whenever the audit report comes out, she may pick this up and go. Are these critics on Twitter? I, or? They are, yes. The, the AG <laughs> says that it's okay for me to yeah. do what it is. How do you respond to that? Well, critics don't know what they're talking about if they're saying that. I mean, look, it's a real easy process. A governor, a legislator at any time can ask for an opinion, and we issue opinions. A local official can ask for one too. I like yeah, that. There are, there's a list of people in the statute, you can, and the governor, certainly one of them. We get a lot from legislators, and we, we answer every opinion 
unless there's pending litigation or something like that. So this is, uh, this is routine. If an opinion benefits somebody, all opinions benefit somebody. If an opinion offends somebody, all opinions generally offend somebody, right? Because you're taking a position. Welcome to uh, welcome to government service. You got to take you got to take opinion, uh, positions. In this case, it's a legal position, and it's excellent. It's written like a law review article by uh, one of the many geniuses that work for me, uh, much smarter than I am. And uh, I stand by Noah Watson's work. He came from the Qualibomb firm. He's a rock star. Let me ask you another, uh, let's shift topics to another one. The gun show loophole has mm -hmm. become a big uh, controversy. The Biden yeah. administration adopted some rules this last week to try to close that. We've mm -hmm. obviously had a, a very high profile mm -hmm. case here in Little Rock yeah. where that gun show loophole played out with the Little Rock Airport director's uh, death um, from the raid by sure, the ATF agents. Sure. I kind of want to get your opinion, first of all, on the, the Biden rule. Yeah. Are you guys going to engage in legislation Yeah, on so that? this is not public yet, uh, but it will be, obviously. So I've joined up with some other states to sue the Biden administration over this, and it has to do with them going beyond their authority. Look. So uh, it's not that you don't mind the loophole being closed. It's you don't think that they can do it by administrative rule. Well, I think it's also bad policy. So uh, it, it's, I think it's a bad idea in this particular case, the way they're doing it. And I think the way, the way they're doing it is bad and what they're doing is bad. What's because your, what's what, your, what's because what they would that? say is, what they would say is every single sale right. by anyone is, co is now covered and you've got to be basically acting like a dealer. Um, look, here's the problem. This is not within the Biden administration's unilateral power to act. And we've seen it with student loans, we've seen it with, with the gun laws, we've seen it with all these different environmental wrecks. When they don't get what they want through Congress, which I understand, it's not a friendly Congress to a lot of their views, it's not a friendly Congress, period. Well, so. well, <laughs> our delegation's friendly. Yeah. I'll just say that. Um, but if you don't get what you want through Congress, that doesn't mean you just go, well, I'll just do it unilaterally, you know, as if you're King Charles the, the Third. So I, I think that you've got to follow the law. What's your solution to the gun show loophole, though? And could it have made a difference in the Malinowski case? Well... You raise a good question because I don't think we know enough about the Malinowski case. Should, um, the, should the body look, cam footage yeah, be released? Let, let, Would let that me, answer questions? Yeah, so here's the problem. Uh, my, and, and I'm a state official, so I'm not involved in the, the, the I was not involved in the, in the federal raid and all that. But I will tell you this, as someone who, uh, who is, couldn't be a bigger uh, law enforcement supporter, look, when when our government acts in a particular way that raises questions, we have an obligation to say that, whether say it, whether I'm a, an individual citizen or whether I'm an office holder. Here's what I would say. My understanding, having looked at the ATF rules, is that they generally require body cam mm -hmm. when there's a pre-planned rate, right? Why? Well, because information from a camera helps fill the vacuum of conspiracy and all this other stuff. So record it with a body cam, that's required, and then there's policy that it shall be released as soon as possible. Yeah, it you hasn't know? been released. Well, why do you think it hasn't been released? Um, look, I, I don't know why it hasn't been released. Uh, I've heard different opinions. Well, you're the state's chief law enforcement yeah, officer. Yeah, I, I haven't been told officer. that. Here's what I'd say. Uh, Apparently, you should have body cam coverage, footage, and it should be released. And I don't understand why that hasn't been released. I think there are a lot of there are questions that have been raised by, by journalists, by attorneys, by just citizens saying, hey, what's the deal here? Look, this is, this is bizarre that there's just been silence. And I understand there's a state investigation going on with it, but there's nothing about this footage that should stop, uh, stop it from uh, being released. All right, um, I gotta cut us off.